Well, I didn't see that coming. So there's an event that has gone down, which to me is monumental for this reaction community. And I really haven't seen a lot of my peers, my fellow reactors covering it. So you know what? I want to take a moment to speak on it, to shed more light on the situation because on one hand, yes, it's controversial. It's absolutely crazy. It's astounding what has gone down. But at the same time, it's also very cool and very dope when you step back and look at it from a wider lens. So what am I talking about? Well, none other than Misfits Boxing, which is notorious for influencer boxing. Yes, we all know Logan Paul fighting KSI, the Jake Pauls of the world at this point in time. Well, guess who just entered the conversation? None other than fellow reactor and the homie, of course, Stevie Knight. Now, he was on the undercard for Misfit 6 down in New Orleans, the Le'Veon Bell JMX fight. And again, if we step back and look at the situation, this is huge. This is a monumental moment for the reactor community in terms of just being more accepted across this platform of YouTube, being more accepted for the influencers that we are, for the impact that we have, and really kind of just being recognized in our own space. Stevie is kind of the first representation and the first reflection of that. So honestly, Stevie, for stepping into the ring, for having the balls that not many do to go gladiator style underneath of the lights, underneath of all the attention and pressure, well done to you, man, because that is not easy. That takes a different mindset, a different character, and just a whole different dedication because not only are you willing to walk in and to get punched in the face, to throw punches back, to possibly be injured, at the same time, you are accepting the discipline and the training regiment that it comes to prepare for a fight, which is absolutely brutal and absolutely intense. I don't know how Stevie did it because being a reactor myself, you know, one of the things is it's all about immediate content, you know, daily content, keeping up with the trends, keeping up with what's going on. So the fact that Stevie had to dedicate time, not only to being a new father, to taking care of his family, to continuing to pump out the reaction content, and he's got a second channel that he is going crazy on, that he is continuing to build, and to train for a fight. I mean, most people just stop all this content creation. A lot of other influencers that I've seen in the space that accept fights, they will just like completely hit the pause button on what they're doing in terms of the videos, unless it's filming content for the fight, unless it's filming training. And they will 100% just focus on training and take that on board because it really is a full-time job. Now, of course, I've seen the fight. I've seen the result. And yes, we're going to talk about it here in a second. But I just want everyone to just at least step back and appreciate what it takes to truly step into the ring and the dedication and the sacrifice and the courage that one has to possess to do that, man. That is no laughing matter at all. So mad respect to Stevie for doing it. And on top of that, on top of that, right? I've seen a number of these influencers that get involved in these boxing matches. And then of course, once that bell goes, they're basically just trying to survive, right? They're, they're just trying to sit there, last the round, just get through it, say that they did it so that they can walk away. Stevie, no. No, that was not good enough for Stevie. Stevie was coming in to win. Stevie came out swinging and he attacked. Stevie put on a heavy weight show. So yet again, those things should absolutely be applauded from Stevie's camp at Stevie's end. Now let's get into the controversial side of it all. So Stevie's opponent was none other than Chase Damore, Netflix star for... I, I'm not really sure what talent it took to be on that show. But anyways, Chase was Stevie's opponent. And when you look at the matchup, it's actually pretty surprising because Stevie is a big dude. He's a very jack dude, as we know. I think his arm is just as big as my head, basically. But Chase had over 45 pounds on Stevie. That is a huge weight difference and weight advantage that Chase has already going into this fight. On top of that, Chase has a longer reach. So not only does he have the weight, he's got more behind what he's doing. He's got a greater reach. So Stevie is already up against it. The odds are not in his favor going into this fight. And I think from the get-go, one of the learning curves for Stevie was that it wasn't just about what goes into the fight, but it's about learning about the process of promoting a fight and what goes on kind of behind the scenes and all the administration and the buildup and the marketing marketing and promo that you have to sacrifice and that you have to put in in order to create attention for this fight. Because at the end of the day, it's about entertainment, about giving the people what they want, a show. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Now to Chase's credit, and I will definitely give credit where credit is due, I think he did a fantastic job of building up this fight and playing promoter. He was 
kooky. He was out there. He made you laugh. He said some wild ish. He was a character. He definitely became a villain to a lot of people. He became someone that you either really want to root for and you're really behind or you really hate and you really want to root against. And I think that's just common nature to building up, promoting a fight. Been preparing for this. Uh, I haven't taken it lightly at all, man. We've been doing our thing and camp, been quiet on the the internet as far as what we've been doing, you know what I'm saying, I wanted to show up and just ready. But um, my trainer kicked my ass and, you know what I'm saying, we're not coming to play. Chase? Huh? <laughs> well, look at Stevie. Stevie can't even keep a straight face. Stevie's like, because Stevie's, you know, he's a more serious dude. Like, he wants to get down to business, I understand. He wants to get on with the fight and just and just get on from there. Now you start this thing off by JMX versus Bell. Now, this is this is Chase Demore versus everybody. This is Chase Demore versus Stevie Knight. You know, we're the main card here. Uh, you know, we're the most entertaining, the most energetic. We put in the most amount of work. Oh, man. But honestly, to me, it is good promotion. And it does highlight this sort of... Stevie wanting to be serious, wanting to be composed, wanting to get on with business versus Chase being the outlandish character. And I think what Chase did was he created this, you know, persona that even Stevie might have bitten into a little too much, that he wasn't going to really take the fight seriously, that he's just there to entertain. He's just there having fun. But what is definitely underappreciated about Chase Demore going into this fight is the experience that he had because he's already been through it. He's learned from his losses and after he lost a fight even he said like he got back to training right away so he's been training months and months for this he's had a lot more time to train and to prepare for this fight and to prepare for this build-up than stevie knight being a newcomer being a first timer to this scene has and as a lot of fighters will tell you that first event that first fight is invaluable because it's not just about the training about hitting the pads once you get under the lights there's there's a new pressure onto you Everything that you have learned, that you know, once you get hit, as Tyson said, it all goes out the window. You know, you then have to process live in that moment. You have someone who's literally trying to KO you, who's trying to end you, who's trying to take you down. And you have to react and you have to stay composed. You have to maintain your energy levels. You have to be smart, right? You have to read your opponent. And hopefully, as time goes on, you learn more and more from the body language of your opponent, from tells that they might have, from the way that they're shifting their weight, the way that they're doing stuff. It's much like a chess match. And what a lot of people don't appreciate is that, you know, some of the greatest fighters, they have an incredible fighting IQ, an incredible fighting intelligence. It's as much a mental game as it is a physical game. It's not just about how hard you can throw, how jacked you are, or even your cardio. There's so much more tactics to it. There's so much more mental. You're always processing. You're always trying to figure things out, reacting, testing within that moment, and learning each and every round. And the best fighters get better and better as the rounds go on. And this is all stuff that Stevie has never been exposed to before. And if we're being honest, I don't really understand why Stevie was given chase as his first fight. It's not really fair to Stevie. Stevie, surely you could have given him another influencer who is also a beginner, who is going through these emotions, going through this learning process and this immense fighting IQ curve at the same time. That surely would have been more fair than someone who's been in the ring, who has a lot more training experience than Stevie does have. But that's neither here nor there. At the end of the day, Stevie took the fight. He accepted it. Game on. So let's get into the fight. Good opening round. And Knight's going to have to find some answers in between rounds. Oh! And the fight breaks out, obviously. I mean, this is where all the positive things that I said about Chase now completely go out of the window. And Stevie talked about this fight. I know he's come out and he's given his analysis on it. And he said, look, man, I shouldn't have turned my back in that situation. You know, if you watch the start of the fight, Stevie comes out and he is trying to be technical. He's got a nice little jab. He's got some good footwork going. He's trying to feel things out, right? He, he's You could tell he's got a game plan. But Chase then swings on him and stevie said he tripped and he fell back but after that moment he got knocked down he know he's down 10 8 right now he's got a lot of catching up to do and you can just see a change in stevie's demeanor he starts putting his head down leading more with that swinging more wild haymakers and like all those sort of technicals and that game planning that composure it just goes completely out the window you can tell there's a little bit of like panic like oh shit this guy's ahead of me now i need to catch up in this fight but that as he'll tell you is incredibly dangerous because then you stop 
focusing on your guard, on defending yourself, on how you're moving, your relation to the ring, where everything is. And that just goes out the window because you start fighting instead of with logic, you start fighting with emotions, which never ends well. And in this case, Stevie's emotions got the best of him, unfortunately. He turns his back on Chase. And you could see if we wind it down here, I think there's a shot that just, hang on, let me see. Nah, he's already, he's already down there. Come here. Right, that one. I think that's the one. Yeah, he's done. He's done right there. At this moment right here, this referee, I don't know what he is doing, why he still stood there. He needs to be starting to insert himself into this fight, getting in between of the fighters, taking care of the situation because boom, there's another shot because Stevie's got no guard. Look, Stevie's hands are down. That's it. Stevie's out, man. And already being out, we should have had a count going on. Right? So that's another shot where Stevie is completely unprotected. And he just took right to the dome. And then he drops, obviously. I mean, look at the man's leg. The man's out. The man's out. But what's Chase doing right now? Right? Swing. 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 And then finally the ref comes in. I mean, that is, first off, that ref should never referee another fight as long as he lives. That is incredibly dangerous to the boxer. Stevie is unprotected. This isn't MMA. This isn't like fucking ground and pound with the entire situation. Stevie is out. There should be a count happening. Chase should be away in his corner while the count is going down, while Stevie is protected, while we see what is going on. It is just essentially cheap shot after cheap shot after cheap shot after cheap shot. And see, that's where it goes from entertainment to now all of a sudden you have a very dangerous, even life-threatening situation. Because when someone can't protect themselves and you're just throwing all of your weight into a punch and just getting headshot after headshot, I mean, you're talking, there could be huge repercussions to that in terms of long-term brain damage, brain injury. I mean, hell, you could even kill them. And it's not something to be taken lightly. And on top of that, after Chase has just sat there just grounding and pounding the shit out of Stevie, right? The fight gets called. <laughs> All right, go away. Chase, he's knocked out right now. Instead, this man wants to sit here and celebrate like he just had a touchdown in football and try to fucking Katniss Everdeen him while standing over top of a man who he's literally just endangered, who he has done something incredibly stupid to in that situation and moment. Like, he has zero self-awareness right now. He's not doing himself any favors. Several times when he's down. And obviously, Stevie's camp gets pissed, as they should do. Piss at the referee, they should be, and then piss at Chase as well for that situation. Because there'll be people that sit here and that look at it and go, well, you know, it was a fight. Chase got caught up in the emotions of the moment. He was kind of in a rhythm in his own. Even Chase tried to defend himself at the end of the day. But let me tell you something about the rules of boxing. When you lay that heavy blow and you got that shot and you wobble your opponent and it goes down and his hands completely drop and he turns into a noodle, you stop. You have the composure to back away from that situation and let the count happen. Those are the rules to boxing. You do not hit someone when they're down. And that is one of the first things that you are taught going into this situation. Now, look, back in the day, my roommate was an MMA fighter. I spent a lot of time at amateur fights, at professional fights, around different fighters and events. I found it great cross training for me when I was going pro on my own career, on my side of things, going semi-pro as well. And it was just dope being in that environment. And one of the things that I learned about fighters, right? Especially when they get in the ring with one another and you see them in the locker room afterwards, you see them in the aftermath of it all. You know, there's definitely the build up. There's the controversy. There's the hate, hating the other opponent as things build and wanting to sell tickets. But afterwards, there's that camaraderie. There's that acceptance that another fellow gladiator has gotten into the ring and has put their ass on the line and has gone through it with you, and it has given their all just like you have given your all. And there is an immense respect and integrity that comes into being a true fighter, much in the same way of like having a respect and integrity of being like a true MC, right? There's, there's a certain code of conduct to fighters and true boxers. And Chase, if you want to tout yourself as this big boxer, this is what you do full time now, this is what you dedicate your life to, well, learn and respect the rules of the sport under which you operate. So hopefully Chase learns from that situation. Hopefully he does get due punishment for that because a precedent is set there and that is not okay. That is when you endanger someone else's life. That is just going way too far and not having that respect for your fellow fighter and that self-control. And Stevie, keep your head up, man. I mean, hopefully it is a learning process 
for him because again, one of those lessons that you can't necessarily get unless you are in the ring is just learning that fighting IQ and learning the mental side of the game. And I think, you know, we learn more from our failures than we do from our successes. And I definitely think Stevie's going to learn from this. I think he's going to grow from this. To all the people that are trolling him, that are, you know, saying, oh, you got your ass knocked out, you know, Mr. Big and Bad in the gym. I mean, come on. Until you put the gloves on and step in the ring, you, you can't appreciate. This is learning a whole new skill set. This is learning a whole new tactical sense. This is just like completely altering everything that you do in order to be a fighter. There is so much that goes into it. There is a lot to learn. I mean, even the great fighters are continuing to learn to this day and to develop and to evolve. So you have nothing to be ashamed of, man. Keep doing what you do. I look forward to all the content you continue to put out and everything you continue to bring to this platform. I'm proud to have you as a friend. I'm proud to have you within this community, man. Much love to you. But what do you guys think on this whole situation do you think stevie will come back do you think he'll take another fight how do you feel about the actions of chase and everything that went down let me know in the comment section below also if you haven't been over to stevie's channel he made a couple videos on this go leave him some love go leave him some support man i could tell he's a little down about the situation but he has nothing to be embarrassed of it's a learning process and he's only going to get better keep going champ